electric kettles are among the most common household appliances used daily for making tea, coffee, or even a late-night cup of instant noodles. The great thing about electric kettles is their safety feature. They automatically switch off when the water reaches the boiling temperature, so you don't have to worry about them overheating or burning your kitchen. But how reliable are they? How do they actually work? In this video, we're going to explain the inner workings of your electric kettle. This type of kettle might be a little different from the one in your kitchen. It is the most common type of kettle used where I live, though more expensive and stylish designs work the same way. In almost all electric kettles, the body is separated from the base, allowing you to move it freely for filling or pouring water without disconnecting the base from the electric socket. To boil water using an electric kettle, first fill the kettle with water, then Connect the base plate to your wall outlet and place the kettle body on the base and push the switch. After a few minutes, depending on the amount of water, the kettle will automatically switch off with a clicking sound and your water will be boiling. Since the kettle switches off automatically, you can leave it there if you no longer need boiling water. How convenient is that? Let's see how the electricity gets inside the kettle body. The base has a cylindrical male connector and the underside of the kettle body has a female socket. Inside the base, the line and neutral wires are connected to two copper strips and a ground wire is connected to the copper strip at the center. These copper strips are separated by circular walls. Inside the female socket of the kettle body, there are two concentric copper rings and one copper pin at the center. When the kettle body is placed on the base plate, these copper rings sit on top of the two copper strips and get the electricity from the outlet. The center copper pin also gets connected to the ground, but most of the time it is left unconnected. Inside the kettle body, the two copper rings connect to the two copper terminals, allowing electricity to flow into the kettle. Let's explore how this electricity is used for heating. Heat in an object comes from the vibration of its atoms and molecules. You can observe these vibrations in boiling water or rising steam. When heat decreases, these vibrations slow and the atoms eventually freeze in place, forming ice. Different materials are made up of different atoms, each with a unique capacity for heat. While water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, an iron rod doesn't undergo any noticeable change at that temperature. However, even in the iron, heat still causes its atoms to vibrate. Now let's bring electricity into the picture. Electrical power pushes electrons through a conductor, a flow we call electric current. In conductors like iron, the free electrons move easily, but as they travel, they collide with the vibrating atoms in the metal's structure. This interaction transfers energy to the atoms, increasing their vibrations and generating heat. This effect is known as joule heating. While we often describe this as collisions, it's important to note that electrons don't behave like billiard balls. Their behavior is influenced by the principles of quantum mechanics. And what actually happens is more complex than our analogy suggests. This level of detail is beyond the scope of this video, but the analogy helps us understand how energy is transferred to the atoms, causing their vibrations to increase and generating heat. While most conductors don't produce visible heat, a high resistance material like nichrome wire does. That's why nichrome is used in electric kettles. It efficiently converts electrical energy into heat. The kettle's heating plate consists of three parts, a kettle base plate, aluminum with screw terminals, and heating elements fused together through a process called brazing, where aluminum melts and flows between the heating element and the base plate, creating a strong bond. The heating element itself 
consists of an aluminum tube housing a high-resistance nichrome wire. This wire is insulated by a heat-conducting material like magnesium oxide to ensure efficient heat transfer. At the tube's ends, two ceramic rings insulate the nichrome wire to prevent contact with the metal, avoiding a potential short circuit. If the electricity bypassed the high-resistance nichrome wire and found a low-resistance path like the metal, it would cause a short circuit, drawing excessive current and triggering the circuit breaker. The nichrome wire generates heat due to its high resistance to electric current. This is similar to how your phone gets hot, but the nichrome wire in the kettle has much higher resistance. When connected to a 120 or 220 volt outlet, it gets extremely hot and glows red. Crimp connectors are used to make it easy to connect and disconnect during repairs. Instead of directly connecting the heating element to the outlet, a switch, sometimes called a thermostat, is added over the kettle handle. It consists of a spring and copper contacts that open or close the circuit depending on the switch's position. Beneath the switch is a small bimetallic disc made of two different metals with varying thermal expansions. When heated, one metal expands more than the other, causing the disc to bend. Due to its unique shape, when the disc bends, it also raises the tongue in the middle. To see more clearly how it bends, imagine a sheet of metal or even paper that has spring-like properties. When it is bent, it wants to go back to its neutral flat state. So, if we cut a U-shape in its bending state, the cut section gets released from bending force and straightens along the bend that is still connected. When the tongue of the bimetallic disc rises, it pushes the switch beyond the critical point, triggering the switch to the off position. The switch is designed so that when it's on, the spring is close to its critical position, making it easy for the bimetallic disc to turn it off when the water reaches boiling point. An indicator light at the bottom of the kettle joins the circuit after the switch, so it only lights up when the switch is on. For additional safety, another thermostat is placed at the center of the heating element. If the upper switch fails or gets stuck, this thermostat cuts off the power when the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, preventing overheating. It uses the same bimetallic disc mechanism to disconnect the power until the temperature drops below 100 degrees Celsius. It is a fail-safe mechanism, so don't worry too much while using these electric kettles. But if you come across an electric pot like this with a switch at the button, always remember to switch off when the water gets boiling. Most of the time, these electric pots don't come with a thermostat inside and it will continue heating as long as the switch is on until all the plastic melts or even worse, catches fire. Now that we understand how each part of an electric kettle works, did you know that electric kettles are more energy efficient than stove top ones? They boil the same amount of water in less time, saving both energy and time. Speaking of saving time, modern tools help us make the most of our day, allowing us to focus on what we love, like learning something new every day. And when it comes to learning, there's a fantastic tool that can help. Brilliant, today's sponsor. Brilliant offers interactive, hands-on lessons in subjects like math, data analysis, programming, and AI. What I love about Brilliant is how it makes learning so engaging and effective. They start with the basics and gradually help you build a deep understanding of each topic. Every lesson involves interactive problem solving. So instead of just watching videos, you get to play with concepts and apply them yourself. Brilliant goes beyond memorization, focusing on developing your critical thinking and problem solving skills. For instance, their math courses don't just teach theory, they show you how to apply formulas 
to solve real-world problems. I've personally found this incredibly helpful in understanding how math applies to both business and daily life. If you're ready to unlock new skills and challenge your mind, you can try Brilliant Free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash quasared or scanning the QR code on the screen. Plus, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. If you're curious about how more home appliances work, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to learn next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.